so two days ago i met this homeless lady named kim and i walked past her and i just god put it on my heart and was just like give her the money that you have in your pocket so that's what i did i told her i needed i wanted to give her something and she was just so grateful like some way somehow we were just talking outside for a good 30 minutes and she was like, can I take your, can I have your number? And I was like, sure, you can call me anytime, you know. I can do what I can to help. And that was that. And last night, she called me. And we had that conversation. If y'all did not see the video that I posted before this, go watch it. She explained how, you know, these organizations, these shelters, they had recorded our conversation with her consent of course I just like I just wanted people to hear her story and to know that these organizations and shelters like it's no um, she was saying like it's no space for them because it's so many people who are needing help and not only that they are helping themselves like everybody is out for themselves she was saying like they are taking food donation clothes donations and giving it to their own people so yeah if you see any homeless person on the streets give them give them what you can you know and another thing she said you know when people just give to the homeless she mentioned how people treat them like dogs like they'll have a meal that they ate the chicken bones and left in the rice and just give it to them like granted I know like beggars can't be choosers but let's like we don't treat people like that if that was you you wouldn't do that to people and she also mentioned like ask a homeless person what they want you know like if you go to the store you know ask them what are you allergic to what you know you can't just give them just anything like they are human beings and she just said so much last night that really really touched me in a major way she even mentioned how you know the people that be in these luxury cars and designer clothes will hand them a dollar or two dollars can't even get a bag of chips with a dollar anymore like things are so expensive now so it's like I understand people you know they can do what they can but like show some humility please because these are human beings at the end of the day and I just feel like we give I'm I'm gonna speak for myself because I like nice things as well and I, I God conflicted me when she said that too because she's like yeah these people be driving these expensive cars and stuff and you can't even give a homeless person five dollars like you handed me a dollar and you just so selfish and you you know like and it's like damn like it's really more to life than materialistic things like it's people out here that really are in need and it really 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 gave me confirmation confirmation on what God called me to do because I already had it in my heart to start a nonprofit organization giving homeless women makeovers because my mom was on them streets. Yeah, my mom was on them streets like most of her life. Teenage, she started doing, I think in her 20s, she started doing drugs and she's been on the streets ever since. So. I always had that in my heart like when I when I make it when I when I you know God bless me enough I'm gonna get back and that was just that confirmation right there like I'm telling you stop and talk to these homeless people they are so wise like you don't even know their story or how they got there like she was a working woman she worked for seven years and she lost her job during the pandemic and she doesn't do drugs she doesn't smoke she doesn't drink she's not a prostitute 
like everybody is not like that like sometimes people just fall short and I almost was on the verge of being homeless last month so I understand like it's not hard to get down like people be thinking they so high on the pedestal like this shit can happen to anybody and God really showed me just by my own experience me going through what I went through so I really just want to help her like if anyone has I'm in Houston Texas if you are in this state and you can help in any way clothes food shelter money please I'm gonna uh once we like set up her GoFundMe account I'm gonna link it like please if you find it in your heart message me please And it might look like it's easy, but it's not easy. Because if I don't work 40 hours a week, I don't have a place to live either, right? <laughs> and you still got to pay the light bill. You still got to pay a water bill. Ain't none of that free. So it's just, it, that's why I said it's a lot when you're trying to get back to that, especially when you're somebody that's used to working and used to having your own place. That's very frustrating. But people who are not used to that, they like living on the streets and, you know, it's, it's whatever for them. They don't care. But people like us that used to having a place, that's a big deal to us. So all of my stuff from my apartment is in storage. I don't pay more than two twenty five a month for that. And that's where a lot of my money goes, like a lot of people, you know, the storage facilities are high. So it's just a it's just a mess. And one of the people told me, Oh, uh, they work at the at the at the witch pile, at the shelters. I've had a few of them. Well, if you were any kind of an addict, we could get you into a system. So I got to be on drugs for y'all to get me into uh, some of these programs fast. But that's what you're telling me? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I knew they were telling the truth because I had met this white lady a few months ago, and she told me she had just got into a shelter because she's on meth or something, and they helping her out. I'm like, that. this is really what's going on right now. I'm not going to go on drugs so I can get into a shelter faster. That's not going to happen either. I just got to keep having faith in God because this is unbelievable. And I done told all of my friends, y'all already know, once I get back on my feet, nobody's coming to live with me again. Y'all going to thug it out just like I did. Nobody's coming to stay with me. That's out. That's out. Because I've been having to depend on strangers for Everything. Everything. It, it is a different day and age now you know they just they don't have the resources and people are constantly being told to wait they have to wait and you don't know how long you'll be waiting that's that's what's irritating about it so that's why i was telling you i wanted to do hair on the side just you know just basic and, and get a little money like that to keep some change in my pocket a friend of mine told me about this course that i could take and it would just be basic because I do want to go get my license. Because I think I told you yesterday I have I have a work rest- a work restraint on me, right? A what? A work restraint. No. You don't know what that is. A work restraint. That's not no no uh no crime. That's where you can only work a certain amount of hours per week because something going on health wise. Oh, okay. Right. That's what that's a restraint. A work restraint. So that's another thing too. A lot of companies, you know, they want to work you like a dog. They don't want to hear you got no restraint. But remember, I also told you about a week ago, I just got approved for this program that helps me with insurance. It has to do with, so I'll be able to go see the doctors now. And then that'll be lifted within a few months. So that is a blessing um, that I have some type of health care. It's not full insurance. But it's something where they'll be, I'll be able to see a doctor and, and all of that for, what, for whatever it is that's going on. So that's the reason why I think God put it on my mind for me to do hair part time. Like I told you, when I get on my feet, that's really what I want to do. Natural, then just give them some little basic braids. Nothing that's expensive because why would you want a really expensive hairstyle when you're trying to get on your feet? You ain't got no money, right? <laughs> so... So you shouldn't be trying to get no expensive hairstyles, just something basic to be able to do job money with. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
because nobody's offering it. You have to get into a shelter in order for them for you to get to a beautician. There are no organizations that will just do basic hairstyles for a woman to look for work. There are none that do that. Mm. Yeah, that's why I really feel like God was putting on my heart to to do that. To do what? To do um, you know, women's hair. That's like in your situation. Like, well, when did you first think about doing that? I've been like I've been thinking about that for some time now, actually. Wow. That's crazy. why I said that's that's kind of that's crazy yeah. that you said that. Yep. Yeah. That's why I've been saying, like, I wanted to start, like, the nonprofit. Yeah. And then you met me. And, know, and knowing that I know what I'm talking about, because there are no organizations that do that. No. You have to get into a shelter. And then, wow. and then I've only heard of one shelter. This and this go be. I've only heard of one shelter that does that. One. That they'll schedule you an appointment with a beautician to so that way they can do the hair. How, I mean, I don't understand how come we, I'm not trying to say we're geniuses or we're special. How come we're the only ones that have thought of that? I thought of this about probably five months ago. I said, when I get on my feet, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick a certain amount per month because, see, the ones that's looking for an expensive hairstyle, they goofing around. They might not even be really looking for work. But the ones that are just like, yeah, just give me something where I can look presentable to look for work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't take a two hundred dollar hairstyle for that. And that's what I really was thinking. I'm like, how many other women are out here in my same position? But remember, what the difference is, I've been living it for months now. Not just somebody who thought about it, but somebody who's been actually living it. Yeah. And it's and it's I'm just so happy I met you. I really am. That's, and your mom, she would be so proud. Oh my god, don't make me cry. I'm not here to make you cry. I'm getting credit. Your credit is due. You have a big heart. I don't care. You need to know that. Your mom is proud of you. You have love for people. Everybody not like that. You just don't know, girl. You ain't out here like I am. And they will be sending them my way. Be sending them. You can come home with me tonight. And I was out there when that tropical storm hit. I was in it. Wow. I was in it, girl. I was running. I was in it. Oh, my God. And them men be showing up. Nope. I'll just stay out here and float. I'm not going with you, honey. I'm not going. Every night somebody pulling up. Or somebody exposing themselves. And I'm like, you see I'm not dressed in no kind of way like a prostitute. And I got a black cap on my head. Why would you come at me like that? I don't understand that. Sweetie, you can come home with me. No, nah, I'll stay at this bus stop. <laughs> I'll stay at this bus stop tonight. Pulling up with fringes. It all kind of sick stuff. I don't to deal with that. It's, it's not it's not good. So I don't think it's a coincidence that we met at all, especially when I literally just said a few months ago, when I get on my feet, I'm going to do hair. I want to go to school and do hair, but now I'm going to pick a certain amount of women per month that's in my situation to just give them a nice basic hairstyle so they can feel like a, like a human being again so they don't feel worthless to start to get depressed like I did. Or have suicidal thoughts. I'm fighting all of this stuff. If I fall into depression, I don't even have the money to afford antidepressants. So I gotta pray and keep going. Everything costs. Yeah. Everything costs. But Everything trust me, the power of prayer, like I'm telling you. I know I know like it be seeming like your your prayers be going unanswered, but when I tell you God is listening. He sees everything. Like he's gonna use this as your testimony. Like you don't even know. I'm saying I had already figured that. That's why I was telling you yesterday. I think that's why that idea popped into my head for two reasons. For one, while I'm under a work restriction, so I can't work a full forty hours a week. If I'm able to just do some basic hairstyles, you know, I'm going to school to get me a license. That would keep money in my pocket. And what's the thing? Okay, well, here's the thing. Now that I didn't got approved for some type of insurance, that's another thing. Employers not gonna want to hear. 
I got an appointment with the doctor here. I got an appointment with the dentist yeah. here. I got an appointment with this. Oh, this place want to see me about housing. Them people not going to want to hear all of that. And it clicked my brain a few months ago because I also thought about babysitting, but I don't have my own place to babysit. So I had thought, well, dang, if I go to school or get somebody to teach me how to do hair a little bit, I can maybe do it out of a hotel room if I stack a little money and do that and just kind of build from there. And then I work part time, do hair on the side. And when I get enough money, I will go to school to do hair and actually have my license. And then I can work on my schedule. I can do it on my time. I don't have to worry about losing my job because I got appointments and stuff that I have to do. Right. They already told me for one uh, situation, I have to actually see a specialist for because they need some x-rays on me. And so there's a lot of different things. I haven't been to a doctor in four years, bro. They want me to get checked for a bunch of four stuff. Four years. Yeah, it's been four years. That's what I'm saying. Them, got, them jobs are not going to want to hear that. That, oh, I, uh, tomorrow I can't come in. Or they, they're not going to want to hear it, honey. The most they're going to let me do is work for a time. That's why I thought, you know what? I'm going to do hell. Because when I do hell, I can set my own schedule. And I don't have to worry about nobody firing me because they mad because I'm telling them I got a dental appointment. And let me tell you something. When you get approved for government, like whatever this stuff is that I'm on, this program I'm on, baby, you better make them appointments as fast as you can because some of them are months in between. And it's not a matter of you calling up all the time and saying, Oh, I got to cancel this appointment because my job won't let me out. Okay, well, we can get you rescheduled for tomorrow. There's a whole bunch of people that's in my situation that's trying to get appointments. You feel me? Yeah. So you just can't be rescheduling all willy-nilly whenever you want. And I'm also trying to get some stuff done for pertaining to weight loss. Um, I was 70 pounds heavier than what you see me in today. So there's a, a regimen that I did, and I might be trying to see if I can get that going and and sell something on the side pertaining to what I did to lose a bunch of weight. And I also worked out at the gym. Like I told you, I already had a gym membership. And one of the personal trainers at the gym was telling me that I do need to look into that because I, I do have, you know, people might buy their products. So there's a lot I'm trying to get done. But mainly... It's the beauty. It's for me to get a, a, a beauty license. That's the main thing. But I got to try before I walk. So that's what I'm saying. If I'm able to do hair somewhere on the side and stack my money and go to school to actually get a license or just keep doing hair on the side, I don't even have to get a license right away. But enough to sustain me, then that's what I'll do. Because I can't miss these doctor and dental appointments. I can't do that. I got to get my health in order. That was a, another thing that was causing me stress is... But I that's the, I'm going to tell you. And sometimes it's helped me because I've helped people before. Yeah. I didn't sit up and get in my position and say, oh, man, all these years I could have been helping poor people or I could have been helping somebody. No, I was already being that way. And I feel like that's the reason why I've been getting help because I was doing that. I'm just saying, man, like I said, now I know what it feels like. It's no longer crying for somebody because of how I feel it must be. No, I'm going through it. I know what it's actually like. And like I said, the men soliciting is just the worst. This one guy, he acts like he was so nice. You want something to drink? I'm in a transit center. Yeah. He went and got me a bottle of water. So you just want water, Sprite, da 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 soda, soda. You come back, say thank you within 10 minutes. I'm getting ready to go to a friend of my house. And I just wanted to see if he wanted to do something. Do something. Mm -mm. Just call me. I thought it was one of the good ones. Then, girl, he just went ahead and said it's something strange for a piece of change. I said, nah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, the enemy will keep trying you, keep trying you. But I'm telling you, God, he is about to change your life. Like, I don't know how, I don't know when, but like, I know he is. And he's taking you through this for a reason. Like, yeah. Yeah, like you're going to have a different type of, yeah, you're definitely going to have a different type of um, passion for what it is you're going to do. Like, 
And it's gonna take you very far. I know it's just like getting through that storm, like. But you gotta get, you gotta go through the storm to get to the other side, like. I know, I know. It be feeling like, damn God, like why? But I'm telling you, like. just saying that like I've been celibate since I moved here and like I like you like you said like people were like men will try to you know it's so crazy like how the enemy would just try to ugh. yeah yeah Uh, telling me you didn't do nothing to the food. Go ahead and take it. First of all, I thank God because 
by normally by seven o'clock, six, seven o'clock in the evening. I've been already most of the time. I've been already eight. I just be ready to have some dessert, like food, something cold if it's hot, some more water, stuff like that. And I noticed the, the food was never hot. So I'm like, I don't know how long this been sitting out. I don't know how many. I don't know. You don't never know what people. Are yeah, doing. <laughs> and honestly. You know, I, I'm like you said, you're spiritual, you in tune with God. Like, uh, like a lot of these people are like, uh, I don't even know how to say it, but like they dibble and dabble in witchcraft, all types of stuff. Like, you have to be really careful, just because with everything is spiritual. Like, I look at everything in the spiritual eye now because. We really in a spiritual warfare right now, and it's Absolutely. scary. It's scary out here. So. And, I, and guess what? After I, when I seen him the second time, he did that again. I said, "Sir, I said something just like the black guy, handsome ass black guy, and a nice big body." And you be. and I said, "Sir, I said I'm not trying to be rude, but I said I don't know what you got going on with you. I don't know if you got